All right, guys, so it's time to dive into the last bit of trigonometry that we're going to be learning today, or rather this year, I should say. So we yesterday learned how we can use sine, cosine, and tangent to find a missing side length in a right triangle using only an angle and another side. But the fact of the matter is we can also go backwards and use sides to find angles. And that is the concept of inverse trig. So it's the same sine, cosine, and tangent we've been using, but the inverse of them. Uh, in the same way that when we have values that are squared, the inverse of that would be to take a square root. Sine and inverse sine are just the opposites. They cancel each other out. So I'll show you how we use them. But important message here, if you know the sine, cosine, or tangent ratio of an angle, you can use the inverse function, sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse to find the measure of the angle. So I want to first show you how we thought of it yesterday how we approached a problem yesterday, because that'll be what's familiar. So we noticed there's a big difference between problems we looked at yesterday and this one, and that is the fact that yesterday we knew the angle and we needed to find a side. Here we know the sides. We don't know the angle. That's what we're trying to find, and that's why we have to use a new approach. <clears throat> but the setup is still the same. Identify your angle. And then figure out what sides are you dealing with? What sides have you been given? Well, I've been given the opposite side and I've been given the hypotenuse. So between sine, cosine, and tangent, which one has the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse? So ka toa, so, oh, oh. So, so, sine. This will be a sine problem. But if we see, if I do sine of our angle x degrees equals opposite 15 over adjacent 24, this is quite a bit different of a problem because x is not just in a fraction, it's in the sine function itself. And because of that, we can't you know, we can't free it with normal means. I can't add, subtract, multiply, or divide out the x here. Instead, I have to cancel out the sine function. And the only way you can cancel out a function is with its inverse. So there's a technical kind of crazy looking step um, that I want to show on a sticky note, but I want you guys to not freak out and think that you have to do this every single time. So currently we have sine of x equals 15 over 24. And usually in math, when we have something like x plus five equals 12, and we need to get rid of x, we have to do something to both sides. So we write minus five on one side, we write minus five on the other. And if I have x squared equals 144, I do the square root on one side, I do the square root on the other. And we see here, okay, that cancels out, this cancels out and leaves me with just the x, just the x. And the other side gets then put in a calculator or something of the sort. Well, the same thing happens here with sine and inverse sine. I'm gonna show you the technical way that we go through this and then the shortcut. So I have to do sine inverse of sine of x, and that's equal to sine inverse of 15 over 24. So I did the same thing to both sides. I applied the inverse sine function to both sides. And that probably looks pretty scary. That's a lot going on. But just like a square and a square root, boom, those cancel each other out, leaving you with x is equal to sine inverse of 15 over 24. And that piece right there is what you can plug straight into a calculator. So we go from this 
two. This. So some quick notes. The inverse sine function is like the mathematical opposite and it's denoted with this little exponent of a negative one. This is pretty common in upper mathematics to have an inverse shown with a negative one as the exponent. <clears throat> but we don't need to fuss too much about the notation, we just have to use it. So real quick, I wanna check how it looks on Desmos. So typically on the standard Desmos graphing or scientific calculator, there isn't a inverse for the sine, cosine, and tangent on the main screen. So let me share my screen for a moment. Now if you're doing this at home, this is why I'm showing it. All right, so here is the main screen. We have sine, cosine, and tangent, so we can very easily do sine, cosine, or tangent. Not quite like that, that's a nightmare. However, there's nothing with the sine inverse right here. So instead we have to go to the function tab, boom, and then I can put sine inverse into there. Then I just put in my ratio, 15 over 24, and boom, I have my angle measure, 38.68 rounds up to 38.7. So back to the camera, boop -a -doo. we found that 36.7 degrees is the measure of that angle. For my students in class, we use our TI Inspire calculators and all of our trig stuff is located in the trig button. So when I hit the trig button, every single trig function, including the higher level ones are there. And of course, we would just need to use the sine inverse. All right, well, let's pick up the pace. On number two, we have our angle that we need to find here the adjacent side, the hypotenuse. So ka toa a ka cosine. Cosine of x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. But again, I cannot solve this problem like this. I need to use the inverse. So if you get comfortable with it, you can jump straight to Instead of doing this step, you can go, okay, I know I'm, I need to find x, so x is going to be equal to, if it's a cosine problem, cosine inverse of our fraction 8 over 11. And hop over to the calculator, cosine inverse 8 over 11 gives 43.3 degrees. Now the inverses seem pretty scary because, I mean, we're dealing with an inverse, we're canceling out trig functions, and it seems like we're doing a whole lot, but with the calculator, it makes it super easy. We don't even have to isolate the variable per se if we just set it up like this to begin with. So it makes it pretty nice. So let's try number three where we just set it up very straightforward. So Here's our angle. We have the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. A hypotenuse, we do not have. So, so ka toa o a, so that would be a tangent problem. But again, I have to use inverse tangent. So the setup would be x is equal to tan inverse of opposite over adjacent. And now I can jump straight into my calculator that I know how to set up. Tan inverse, 20 divided by 37. Bada bing, bada boom, we get 28.393. That rounds up to 28.4 degrees. By the way, a good way to check yourself is Angle should be between 
zero and 90. Oops. So for the most part, it can't be 90 or greater, and obviously it can't be zero or lower. So you should be getting a number between those ranges, and if you're not, that's a problem. They're just a heads up. All right, let's look at one more. We've got angle. And what sides are we given? Hypotenuse and adjacent. And if we have the adjacent and hypotenuse sides, so a so, a ka, or a toa. That's a ka for cosine. So x is going to be equal to cosine inverse of a over h. And boom, that's all you have to do just the setup because then the next thing you do is plug it into a calculator. Cosine inverse of 18 divided by 23. I get a fairly nice decimal for that one, just 38.5, nothing to round. All right, the next two I'm just gonna set up, save some time. So if X is in this corner, I'm given the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So ka toa, O, that's a sign problem. So X is equal to sine inverse of O over H. And what about number six? For that I'm given the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. So ka toa tangent. So X is gonna be equal to tan inverse of opposite over adjacent. So this structure is saying to find the missing angle, it's gonna be equal to the inverse trig function of the ratio of sides associated with that trig function. So inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse. We're using the same structures that we've learned about in the past two days and applying them to a new context, you know, restructuring it just a little bit. All right, so the big kicker here is how do I know when to use sine and when to use sine inverse? And the question is answered, are you finding sides or are you finding an angle? Finding sides, you use sine, cosine, and tangent. Finding angles, that's where you pull out the inverses, sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. So in an example like number seven, if I'm looking at this problem with my eyeballs, I see that we know the angle measure. So the angle measure is known solving for a side. Use sine, cos, or tan. So I'm gonna set this up like we were solving on, let's see what day was that? Thursday, there we go. So that means this would be, whoops, I, I was trying to get ahead of myself there. I have to identify what sides I'm using if I wanna know what trig function to use. So I have my opposite leg and I have my adjacent leg. So katoa, this is a tangent problem, but I think I gave that away already. So tangent of our angle 39 degrees, is gonna be equal to opposite 11 over adjacent X. And this is where we have to do that kind of switcheroo, multiply both sides by X, and then divide out the trig function, ending up with X equals 11 divided by tangent of 39, but it works just like it did the day before. 
For this, you should get 13.6. And that's the same with all the problems here on the front. We know our angle measure. So anytime you see an angle measure, you see the number there, you know that this is going to use regular sine, regular cosine, or regular tangent. But if I look over here, boom, I do not know the angle measure. I don't know it. And so I don't know So I'm going to use sine inverse, cosine inverse, or tan inverse. Again, one of those three based on which one I use for the problem, which we still have to figure out. So we look at the angle. I know the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. AH, this is a cosine problem. Oops. I can save it. So x is equal to cosine inverse of a over h. And you would solve that out to get an angle measure of 50.5 degrees. So we're going to finish this up by looking at some word problems. I know, everybody's favorite. So the big thing here is obviously I can't just look at the problem and see which to use like I can if there's a picture. But this time the information is hidden among the words and that is your giveaway. So before I even draw the picture, I can look at the problem and read. This one has an angle of 75, so we know the angle. And we discussed if we know the angle, I can say normal sine cosine tangent. So again, this is a sine cosine tangent problem. In the second problem, I can read through the whole thing and I don't find an angle measure. It only gives me two sides and it asks me what angle, so I don't know. So I have to use the inverse functions. So let's actually set these up real quick. And then that'll be it for the video. So ladder leaning against a wall makes an angle of 75 degrees with the ground. If the foot of the ladder is six feet from the base of the wall, what is the length of the ladder? So we always have our ground in problems like this and we have a wall. The ladder is leaning one foot on the ground and one on the wall, or one end on the ground, one on the wall. Boom, we've got our triangle. So it says the ladder leaning against the wall makes an angle of 85 de or 75 degrees with the ground. So that angle will be right here. If the foot of the ladder is six feet away from the base of the wall, so six goes here, how long is the ladder? X. I look and see my angle here. I know the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. A H, cosine problem, cosine of 75 degrees is A over H. Then what about 19? Jaden is flying a kite and lets off her Let's out 275 feet of string. The kite is 150 feet above the ground, and assuming the string is perfectly straight, what angle does the string make with the ground? So I'm imagining this little dude, he's got his string and his kite. And so there's the height of the kite off the ground and the height the kite is away from the kiddo. So the string of the kite is 275 feet long, oops, 275, and the kite is 150 feet above the ground. We want to know what angle does the string make with the ground? 
So this is what I need to know. I have my opposite hypotenuse sign, side, so this is going to be a sine inverse problem. Our angle is equal to sine inverse of opposite over hypotenuse. So the way you figure out which one to use when it's a word problem is the same as normal, but you just have to read a little bit to figure out, are they giving you the angle like in this problem or are they asking you to find the angle? So when you're solving for a missing side, normal trig. Solving for a missing angle, inverse trig. And that's all I have for you guys today. There's a short assignment uh, following up today's to kind of balance out with yesterday's longer assignment. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will see you guys next week. See you then.